Hi there, Internet. It's Anthony, and I'm about to do another reaction to The Walking Dead. This is Season 5, Episode 6, Consumed. And I'm excited because when you click on the episode, you know, the little picture comes up on the screen. I guess that's like the thumbnail from the episode. And it was Carol and Daryl. So I'm guessing we're going to see what was going on with them now, this episode. So um, I'm looking forward to it because, it, I mean... This will hopefully explain what was happening at the end of that episode like two episodes ago when Daryl was like, come on out. So let's go ahead and get into it. There's Carol. Oh, is this from when Carol got sent away? Go away! Too bad those things don't listen. They don't care how sad you are. Hitchhikers may be escaping inmates. I remember that sign. Yeah, this is when she went back to the prison. It'd be so weird when they be putting up these, you know, images or, you know, visuals of Atlanta looking all destroyed. Has that car not noticed that it's being followed? I mean... Seem like a pretty obvious tale. I don't care how much they turn their headlights out. That thing might give them away. They'll be like, now why is that walker so interested in that vehicle back there? It's temporary housing. Treating survivors of childhood abuse. What if I didn't show up? Still don't know. I was kind of cool when it was Carol laying there and she was looking like she was talking to Daryl Cheryl. I mean, Daryl Shadow on the thing. Probably would have worked in a situation where like a character was a shadow of themselves or something. <laughs> Metaphorically, I don't know. That looks like a scary movie poster. <laughs> oh, is that a kid walker? Man. I want to see what like the youngest walkers look like. Like, are there any baby walkers out there? Like, just crawling around? It is kind of crazy that we never seem to see children walkers. For one thing, it probably has to do a lot with like just labor laws. Like it takes a long time getting all that makeup and stuff and all that. And by the time these people are done with those days, they've had long days. Whoa. Taking things back a bit and that's a nice little Parallel, mirrored, visual in a way. Daryl and Tyrese both carrying that a child that's wrapped up. Downtown. Everything just looks so messed up. But again, though, it's so cool seeing it. Like I know all these places so well. So it's just weird seeing them look like this. Like I've parked in this specific parking deck before. After I met up with Tyrese, the girls. Yeah, I know what happened. I ain't here. Right. <laughs> it was worse than that. It's crazy to think that it could be worse than that. Oh, there we go. The crosses. Daryl, don't. Get up. Hands up. Hey, Both look up. who it is. <laughs> I can't take this man serious. Lay down your crossbow. So please lay down your crossbow. He said, please lay down your crossbow. You look tough. 
He'll be all right. He let those out to keep them back. Could that have killed him? Maybe. I don't know, but he was stealing our weapons. He's just a damn kid. Daryl really did swat that gun down. Ben could die. I'll see right here. I'm trying. Sometimes I do kind of wish that they kept the way they used to do it, where they didn't really have too much score and music going on. They kind of do it a lot now. Like how um, Daryl just said, well, that's not where you are, you're right here, or whatever he said, and then it comes in. Like, I don't know, I kind of have liked how The Walking Dead strayed away from that type of stuff. Dang. Look at the Phillips Arena. Ooh. That's not a good place to hide. Oh, dang. Are they gonna knock them over? He said, buckle up. Yo. You gonna try to go in reverse? No, they're going forward. I thought the thing flipped over, first of all. Second of all, okay? how are they okay? It's crazy. This because they were ready for it. That's some crazy impact. Right. Hopefully they actually get to Beth, since we know this happens after the episode with Beth. Since we saw, what's what's his name? I don't remember his name, but the Tyler James Williams character. At the prison, I got to be who I always thought I should be. That's interesting. I thought I should have been. She likes herself more in the apocalypse. Well, she did until that version also got burned away. Yeah. So that means he's nearby. Whoa, very nearby. Please, please, I, I have to protect myself. Why'd you follow me? I, I didn't, I, I swear, I thought you followed me. Bullshit. <laughs> he said, I thought you followed me. What's wrong with Hustle there? No, 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 please, please, please. Everybody hates Chris. <laughs> I was hoping so much they just walk away and that would start playing. Keep on having these Carol flashbacks. The bill's next door is a basement. It's clear. We'll be safe. They're happy they kept him alive now because he got some intel. Oh my goodness! Come on! Wait, 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 wait. They can help her. They're the only ones who can. They have medicine, machines, a doctor. You go yeah, but then they're gonna track her. Okay? And then she can't get their help. Is that what you want? We can get her back. We can get Beth back. How? Oh, so they're gonna he's gonna go back and get his people and come back on them. I wonder how long Tyler James Williams is gonna be on here. Such a rant it just it's a really interesting casting choice for this show. I don't know, it's just not I guess it's cause I'm just so you know some people it's like it's not their fault, but it's like, I guess they do such a good job in a role. You can't see them as anything other than that. Like anytime I see him as anything other than um, Chris, 
I'm just seeing Chris in whatever situation he is in, and I can't even barely take it seriously. <laughs> so it's, I guess that's why for me it's just an interesting um, casting choice. Probably like if somebody that hadn't watched Everybody Hates Chris saw this, it would just all seem regular. But for me, it's just like this constant undercurrent of humor in everything that I, in every single time I see him on screen right now. But um, yeah, so I'm. It's interesting though. I hadn't. I definitely did not know he was on the show and did not expect him to pop up. So, and I thought he might have just been on that one episode. So it's cool to see he's looking like he's about to be even more of a recurring character. So I'm excited to see where that's going to go. All right. So in regards to the episode, really neat little episode. Another pretty focused one. You know, they honed in on Daryl and Carol. I really like how the show is starting to do that. It seems like ever since, I guess, around season four, it's been doing this a lot more consistently where it, you know, has these episodes that are focused in on like two, maybe three specific characters, sometimes even mainly on one, like the one with Beth. And that's a pretty interesting route. Like it used to kind of feel like that was like a one-off thing that they do sometimes, but now it's starting to more so just become the style and format of the show is having these type of like, you know, really you know honed in focused in episodes some characters we may not see them for a couple episodes and they come and have their own episode so i think and i and then of course they will have the episodes every now and then where everybody either from whatever happened in the plot is in the same place or where they're transitioning between different people and i think they've gotten to a point where they're doing a really good job of balancing all of that stuff and they're making it work really well like i think that just from like a you know I guess a writing standpoint you could say this show has been getting better as it's been going I think it's benefited from it's I think it's benefited from being further in the story honestly like it seems like ever since like season four some of season three even they've been doing a very good job of leveraging the characters background and not even necessarily their background before the apocalypse started but their background from since we've been watching them and the things that we've seen them go through oftentimes tv shows like you know will build their build the character's foundation on who they were sort of before the show started and then throughout the show they're dealing with various traumas that they have to overcome from that and we might learn a little bit more about that as we go but this one we're seeing them go through these traumas and then they're starting to become new characters before our eyes and then those characters we're seeing them deal with their past and i think that's been pretty cool like with carol this episode it was a perfect example like for one thing you know it as i've always said it's crazy how far she's come like from you know just you know being the lady that was getting beat by her husband you know was coming from the abusive relationship to now what she is now I mean, it's easy to for, to even forget about all that type of stuff because she's gone through so much more. But this episode, they really played a lot off of her, you know, her connection to her daughter, of course, to Sophia. And the fact that Sophia died, became a walker, and, you know, she wasn't able to protect her. Carol wasn't able to protect her. And... It wasn't like super like, you know, it, it wasn't like heavy handed or anything, but the way that things progressed through the episode, you could tell that was something that was affecting her. They saw that little walker in the, you know, the what like whatever type of the, the place it was, the temporary housing that she said that her and Sophia had went to while like Ed was around and they were trying to get away from him or something. They saw the little walker and you could tell that that really affected Carol and Daryl automatically knew it. And so he took care of it then it flashes to Tyrese carrying the other little girl whichever one it was so it's showing like a cumulative buildup of how this type of stuff is impacting Carol and then later in the episode she has she starts talking about how she feels like she's changed how this one version of her is burning away then she likes this version another version but then it burns away and so I just think it's really cool how they're actually they're these people are really almost totally becoming new people and we're seeing them we're seeing them deal with the things that they went through like two three four seasons ago a lot of times shows will sort of forget about that type of stuff somehow but i like how they don't forget about it here but they also don't force it down your throat 
to you know use it for character development they just kind of subtly allow a character to be dealing with something and you can kind of put it together and be like oh yeah they feel that way because of what happened to them at this certain point similar i feel like with beth they don't usually bring up her suicide attempts like very you know directly it seems but there have been times where something happens that kind of puts you in the mind of it again and you're like, oh, yeah, this probably affects Beth a certain way because of her past with that, that we've seen while watching the show. So I like the way that they've been using the, you know, in show timeline events that have happened to start to weigh in on these characters in pretty subtle ways. It's happened with Rick, too, as we've seen. So that was like probably my favorite aspect of this episode. And also Daryl and Carol's dynamic is good to see them together again, like as a duo. Like, I mean, they seem to really, like, at this point, have, like, a brother-sisterly kind of bond. Like, they just sort of know each other. You know what I mean? Like, and they know exactly, like, how each other is feeling in a certain situation. They're really protective of each other. You saw Daryl almost killed, what's his name? Tyler James Williams character or whatever. So, like, because he put them in danger. So, mainly Carol. So, yeah, I just thought that was pretty cool to see. And I guess this also answers who Daryl was like talking to when he said, come on out in that other episode. So now we kind of have an idea at least of where things went from here. It's interesting. These episodes have been in an interesting timeline, huh? Because that means that episode a few episodes ago at the end happened like right after everything that happened here. But I don't know. I'm getting confused now just trying to think about it all. But yeah so overall definitely another good episode like i i think that you know season four and five of this show they've really been like sort of stepping their game up in a lot of departments like this it feels like and i guess that's just because they've been able to spend more time with these characters like probably the writers have gotten more used to writing for the characters and you know like they just also have more to work with because the characters have more of a background that we've seen so i am excited to see how they're going to break beth out of this place and if you know it's going to be another like you know sort of war between their whole faction and then everybody at this hospital so yeah go ahead and leave a comment down below let me know what you thought about the episode like the video if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more head over to patreon for the full uncut reaction way ahead of youtube schedule until next time, I'm Anthony, and I will see you all later.